In a CNN exclusive, U Ukrainian resistance fighters are revealing how they helped drive Russian forces out of the southern city of Kherson. CNN senior international correspondent Sam Kiley is on the scene for us tonight. Sam, this is remarkable. These civilians risking their own lives to help free their city that was held by Russian forces. Yeah, we've seen in the past the role played by collaborators here, spies for Russia inside Ukraine, frequently arrested, calling in airstrikes, giving coordinates. But of course, the same thing's going on in occupied territory, particularly in the city of Kherson, Alex, which was a hotbed of resistance. The first and only city captured that was a regional capital captured by Russia back in March. And from day one, the resistance started getting uh, doing its work. And many of them were self-starters. Take a look. One. 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 Archie One. killed twice so while he was still a teenager. If I'm the guy, he stops to pee. So I'm having a pee. And then what do you do? Fum. Oh, God, I got a chill then. He says he left his victim to bleed on the grass in the pitch dark. Archie struck again moments later. Another drunk Russian soldier. Another throat cut. He acted alone, but now he was one of Kherson's resistance fighters. They were wasted. It had only been a few days since they entered the city. I finished the first one immediately and then caught up with the other one and killed him on the spot. I threw away the knife and the jacket covered with blood and just left. Archie was only 19 when the Russians captured his city in March. With a friend, he says he drove around the city gathering intelligence to send to Ukraine's armed forces. At least 10 Russians were slaughtered every night. I wasn't the only one in Kherson. There were a lot of athletic and clever partisan guys. For eight months, Ukrainian partisans waged a psychological war against the occupiers and their collaborators targeting Ukrainians who took top posts handed out by Russia. As a result of a sneaky terrorist act today, our colleague, my friend Dmitry Savluchenko, has died. Stramusov himself would die in the final days of Russia's occupation of Kherson city, which ended three weeks ago. Kherson was the only regional capital to fall to Russia, but its population made sure that the invaders were unwelcome from the start. That's incoming. In the last hour or so that we've been here in Kherson, there's been a constant shelling backwards and forwards. Almost all of that shelling will ultimately rely on somebody on the ground telling the gunner where to drop those bombs. Ihor was a young father. This warehouse is wrecked because of him. The Russian military kept here around 20 to 30 vehicles. There were armored trucks, APCs, and the Russians lived here. I was passing by this place and I saw all the vehicles. Ihor communicated on his phone app with his handler, code name The Smoke. I turned on the camera and pointed it at the building, and I was just walking and talking on the phone, and the camera was filming. I deleted the video, of course, because if they would stop me somewhere and check my videos and pictures, there would be questions. Less than a day later, he says, Russian vehicles were a mangled mess as Ukraine rained missiles down on the newly identified target. It was a crucial step in destroying Russia's capacity to hold on to the city. With the Russians now massed on the eastern side of the Dnipro River, they're close and still control 60% of the province, which they claim is now part of Russia. No doubt there are many Ukrainians among them who are also prepared to prove them wrong and to kill. Do you feel sorry for the guys you killed at all? Yes. <laughs> no. So uh, what we're now experiencing across the country, though, is cruise missile strikes. The government's saying more than 70 have once again attacked the critical national infrastructure, the electrical system here in Quivery Re, as it is across much of the country, has once again been destroyed in precision strikes by the Russians. As it gets colder and colder in Ukraine. Sam Kiley, thank you so much for that report. Really appreciate it.
Now joining us now is CNN military analyst, retired General Wesley Clark. General Clark, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, I want to get to what Sam was just talking about there, this wave of strikes all across Ukraine, this latest uh, barrage, salvo, killing seven ar around Kyiv, and then a newborn in a maternity ward down in, in the Zaporizhia region. Ukraine, it appears, is essentially being forced to fight on two fronts, defending its civilian infrastructure while also fighting on the front lines in the east and the south. Is that how you see it? That's the way I see it, and uh, it's all part of Putin's strategy. Now, Putin is willing to have a ceasefire, and this is part of the strategy. So he's pulled back out of Kherson. You don't hear any more talk about nuclear right now. He's pummeling the civilian population, trying to make it as unpleasant as possible. What he'd really like is a ceasefire so he can rebuild his forces and then continue the attack. There are rumblings of people in the West who say, well, maybe we should have a ceasefire. It's so terrible. The Ukrainians don't want it because they know what it means. There have been ceasefires. This war has gone on for eight years, uh, and Putin hasn't given up his intent to conquer all of Ukraine. So right now, the Ukrainian forces still have the momentum. They need to be reinforced while we're doing everything we can to help the uh, Ukrainians rebuild their infrastructure and defend against these cruise missile attacks. These strikes all across the country, do, do you see this as Putin acknowledging that his troops can't make any progress, so he's just trying to cripple the country? Putin is not going to acknowledge this. What he's, what he's doing is um, he is signaling, and there have been some discussions, apparently, between American officials and Russian officials. So he's signaling by the heavy bombardment on, in Donbass and by uh, these strikes on the infrastructure, he's not giving in. He's going to fight, fight, fight while he get, tries to get the best diplomatic deal he can. Uh, so this is the Russian strategy. The Ukrainian strategy is we're going after those. We're going to push them right out of the country. And, um, and I think the majority of the American people realize the only real solution to this is to push the Russians out of the country with military power. Yeah, the Ukrainians giving no indication they plan to sit down and negotiate anytime soon. General Wesley Clark, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.